What's going on everybody? Normally, I don't record a video halfway through my project. However, I just know that some of the frustrations I had with these instructions that I know this video is gonna help somebody. I think one of the things where the instructions don't make it clear is a lot of the circled parts, I know I'm old, I don't have the best vision, but a lot of the circled parts are not exactly clear what bolt or what bolt holes you need to go into or something like that. So that's one of the biggest issues with the instructions. I ordered this from Buggies Unlimited. Uh, they've been great. I'm happy that I ordered it from them and I'll tell you why here in a second. Well, here's the box that it comes in. It's about maybe three feet that way almost and about four feet this way. About 150, I don't know, 200 pounds, something. Just to give you perspective. So it's a heavy box. Be prepared for that. I did have one damaged part here when I received it. I guess some sort of bolt rub, but you know, this is probably going to get all beat to heck anyways, but it did show up like that. So first off, one of the things that's not obvious, and I didn't have a roof on my golf cart for the longest time anyways, but one of the things that's not immediately obvious if you're not paying attention like I wasn't, is for this series of golf cart, I think from up to 1999, you can look at the description but it does require you to purchase the additional roof supports in the back. The ones that come with this kit do not work with this model golf cart. So this is a 1992. So if you have an old one like I do, um, and again, they indicated on the, the webpage, I'll show a clip of it here, uh, but it was not immediately obvious to me and I had to order those. Those are another 40 bucks, I believe. So if you have an old one like mine, you're going to need that if you want to use the roof like I do. So a couple things when you open up the package. Um, number one, you, as you get some of the parts out, you may have some of these parts, the foot rest and the seat frame will probably be off to the side in a box. Um, then you'll get to, I believe it's going to be the main seat frame brackets. We looked for probably about five minutes before realizing they were tucked up underneath. I believe it was the footrest. But either way, once you get to the point to where you need those, look under the footrest and underneath this thing here. Okay, so we'll go step by step. And again, my apologies for not recording this as I go through, but I didn't think I would need it. I didn't think it would be helpful, but here we go. So step one, easy enough, remove your seat, remove the canopy, remove the bumper, the motor cover if you have one. We did not have one here. Um, and so that's easy enough, no problems. Step two, take the bumper, put it on right there. Of course, you're gonna have to take your bumper off, but two nuts and bolts, hold it on there. That's step two. Moving on. All right, so now we're at step three where they want you to install the main seat frame brackets, which are the ones that look like that, and are the ones that go from here, basically there, comes down underneath, and then bolts back here. So it's kind of a funky looking shape thing. Easy enough, but again, took us a little bit to find them. Then it says, install the front seat lean back brackets, which are these pictured here, okay? And there, unfortunately, my kit didn't have it. So I guess they left it out. I wasn't the first one this happened to, apparently. The good news is Buggies Unlimited uh, basically did a warranty uh, shipment out to me. And within just a few days, I got these parts delivered to me, no charge. So I think that's a good reason to go with Buggies Unlimited versus a larger type web-based store. The customer service was great, called them up, this is what happened, they said no problem, got it out, no charge. By the way, mine also didn't seem to find, I may end up with them here, I don't know, we'll see, didn't seem to have the four bolts that go into here that hold kind of the, this bracket here and also the main bracket here. There's four bolts that held in the previous, the stock bracket, and I did not have these bolts. The stock bolts will not work. They're not long enough to hold all these brackets in one place. So just throwing that out there. 
I'm guessing yours will have that. The reason why I tell you this, I believe that there was another comment that somebody else did not have these or have some bolts or something like that. So these were four bolts. I just used, I think they're nine sixteenths or something like that. Um, and they're about maybe two inches long. The other problem that I had is that the main seat bracket, which is the one that goes back towards the back and it's underneath all of this, was too long. I had to cut it. So again, sorry I'm halfway through the project, but this will help you hopefully. When this was put on there, there's two little bolt holes and it was too high to get the bolts in there. So literally had to cut it. I, you know, you can use a grinder if you want, a hacksaw, that would take forever. But I used my vertical bandsaw to cut the length off right here on this edge so that the holes go down enough so that I can get the bolts in. So that was uh, problem number two. By the way, I think this is gonna be a nice kit, <laughs> but it wasn't perfect. Now, mind you, this is a very old golf cart. I think it's in 1992. Maybe this is some sort of weird golf cart. Maybe your experience will be different, but that's the issue that I had. So again, wasn't paying attention. I didn't order the right, I didn't order the additional roof struts. I had to trim two of those parts. That was an issue for me and I had two missing parts. I think other than all that, it's gonna be nice. But anyways, let's move forward. Moving on to number four, step four is when you install the, the foot rest. Um, what I did is I had a basket. You can kind of, you need something to prop it up, right? To help you. Cause you're going to try to have to align these, put the bolts in, whatever. This, you're going to put this foot rest up on the bumper and then the main seat bracket goes on top of that. I guess it probably doesn't matter either way, but either way. And then you bolt those two things together on your bumper. So again, having something to hold the footrest up was very helpful when lining all that up or whatever. Um, it is easier if you have two people. One of the other things that I would advise you to do is to not tighten up these bolts, these bolts, and the ones that, again, I'm sorry, that are up underneath there, right there, until you get these two bolts put in when you start to put in the main seating platform let's see what they call it the seat frame when you start to put in the seat frame it was a bear to get those two bolts in because they were too the holes were too narrow again i don't know if my cart's a funky cart i don't know if these things are bent whatever i could have easily loosened everything up but they're a pain to get back up underneath there four times, whatever. You're near the batteries, you're getting acid all over you. Just make sure that you kind of at least, I would recommend that you leave those not, you know, loose where you can move it. So these are more easily able to drop in here and there. It took me about 10 minutes of kind of angling this up, trying to drive them in, used a hammer, got them in, it's fine now. All right, moving on to number six, that was pretty straightforward, but it wasn't obvious in the pictures where the bolt is. But if you look down up in here, those, one there, one there. So moving on to step number seven, and again, here, not very clear. It's not clear to me, do the armrests go on the outside of this? Do they go on the inside? So I'm not finished yet, but I believe that step number seven, the armrest, this little back support here, whatever it's called, see what, seat back support. The seat back support looks like it goes inside of this main part here. And it looks like that the armrest go on the outside of this thing. And then there's gonna be a bracket down here. So. The way you figure that out is you look down here and it looks like this is on the outside. But again, up here, it's hard to tell. It would be nice if they had some sort of instructions there. Finally, the other hard part on step seven is what bolts to use where. It tells you to use the hardware from pack number three, which I did. So there's some long bolts there that make sense. 
and on there. When you get down to here, it doesn't make sense that you use the long bolts. So I'm just assuming that we use these so that when you close this, there's no interference there. I don't know if one of the bolts would still fit. I don't know. So it would be nice, and I may try this, to have this turned around where there's no ex external bolt sticking out there. But I think the long ones obviously don't make sense there. However, I don't know that they make sense here either, right? So you've got that there. That doesn't look right. It doesn't look right there or there. This would definitely hit, so it can't go that way. You don't want a bolt sticking out like that. So, again, pack number three had all of this plus those two and these. So my guess is these go there. Now we're in real time. I uh, left off last night with step number seven. So I'll try to make it a little more clear and record it as I move forward. All right, just wrapping up step number seven. This was the only orientation that made sense. Putting the bolt the other way, there's interference with the length of the bolt on this coming down. And using the longer bolts certainly didn't work in either way. So those are the bolts that seem to be working for this spot. Moving up here, just be prepared that these seat brackets appear to go on top of this seat thing. So don't worry about bolting these down just yet. I don't think it tells you to, um, but I almost did. So you can see kind of the bar here, the back of the seat, which is a future step, but this bracket goes on top. So don't tighten those down just yet. All right, moving on to step number eight. Very straightforward, easy. You can see that it's not fully, this bracket is not fully supporting that just yet. I'm guessing it's just a function over time. Those will bend down a little bit and then that'll be there to support it. But for now, it's up flush against there, the back of this. And uh, right now it's not really holding much, but I'm sure once we start putting weight on it, it will. All right, step nine, easy enough. Pack number four, that's a 10 millimeter wrench needed for those bolts, very easy. And then that's what I just explained before, but up here, just be mindful not to screw in those two things there and there and there. So step 10, straightforward, bolt everything together, tighten it down. So for this video, I'm not going to put on the roof. We've got some, uh, we're going to paint this thing eventually. Um, so I'm not going to put on the struts that go up to the roof, but those are easy enough um, using pack number five. And uh, looks easy enough. Maybe I'll do an addendum to this one day, but uh, yeah, for now, I'm not going to put those on. On to uh, step number 12. Pack number six. Attach seat bottom and strap to seat frame. All right. All right, let's see if this is straightforward. All right, so there she is all finished. By the way, the first time you step on that, the problem that I mentioned earlier will be addressed. Quickly goes down to the, uh, the guides down there, the brackets. So earlier, I, for whatever reason, didn't uh, clue in that these are needed here. Um, just distracted from overnight. Looks like there, there should be a spacer or something that goes in there. So I think these may be involved somewhere up here. Maybe they go in between the strut here and the roof. I don't know. So if you know, comment below, help us out. Thanks. All right, one of the things that's not covered in the directions, which I think I have it right, is mounting back the front seat. So if you're like me, you've got an old one, you took off something that looks like this. So really what you need to do is get, what I did to make it a little bit easier, I unscrewed these four Phillips to remove the seat and get to the screw a little bit better. Um, but there's a little screw back here and on the other side. So it's hard to get a wrench in there, but you can. I was able to get a little uh, a wrench in there to loosen it up and then the seat in that bracket, which I'll show you in a minute, goes on the front. The one thing I don't like about it, it looks like if you hit it hard enough on one corner, 
or somebody grabs on it, uh, it could move it down. So I may end up making um, some sort of bracket for it. It looks like there's actually three holes on the bracket, but there's only one on my seat. So probably what I'll do is eventually drill two more holes. I'll see how it works. Drill two holes in there to see if I can get them to match up. And that'll be a pretty, uh, pretty stable mount. All right, so once you get the seat off, you should be able to angle in a wrench right there. Um, I think it's like a 7 16 but I'm using an 11. Uh, it's working fine. And that's enough to hold it while you unscrew that one. All right, I took this... Uh, all right, I took this other part off. Now you can get a socket on there. All right, she's all done. So overall, we're very happy with it. It's a nice kit. A little tweaking here and there as discussed for the last 15 minutes, but we're very happy with it. It's very sturdy. You can see the seat has been flipped down where it's sloping towards the front. So I reverse that. There's the bed. Front seats. It's not nearly as nice as the front, but it's nice. All right, hopefully this helps somebody. Thanks for watching. Have fun.